I've done that myself. <laughs> Welcome to Entrepreneurs International Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I'm Roger Killen, the organizer. This evening, Megan Nolan is training us on how to get stuff done with more fun by boosting our health and energy. Megan, I've got a couple of questions that will help us to get to know you. The first is, what is the wildest thing that you've ever done? The wildest thing that I've ever done is close my business and move to Hawaii, not once, but twice. <laughs> I'm sure there's a story behind that. There's a few. <laughs> and the second question, what's one of your favorite quotes and why? Well, I definitely have a few, but I would say that one of my favorites is a Rumi quote, and it's to live as if life is rigged in your favor. And so to me, that is recognizing that you know we have the opportunity to stay in a place of trust and excitement and support and knowing that we're always supported and always connected and, and staying in touch with that is really important for me and I think for all of us. So that's definitely one of my favorites. Okay, lovely, thank you. Nice quote it is too. Uh, participants, uh, please type your questions into the chat and I'll pass them on to Megan in the course of her talk. Uh, you're going to be sent a link to the recording of Megan's training in a few hours. Uh, but uh, please, I encourage you to take notes anyway, because the very act of taking notes. Uh, Megan, back to you to manage the admit all uh, button for a minute. Uh, but please take notes anyway, because the, the act of taking notes will increase what you absorb by as much as 30%. Uh, Megan, are you ready to rock the stage? I'm so ready, yes. <laughs> I'll take back the admit function and you take her away. Show us how it's done. Wow us. Over to you. Will do. Thank you so much, Roger. And thank you, everybody, for being here today, this afternoon, this evening, whatever it is for you. And I'm so, so deeply honored to be joining you. And we're, today we're going to be talking about how you can get more done so that you can have more fun by taking care of your business's number one asset, which is you. So, so grateful to be here with you all. So as you see here, I am a vitality coach, a personal trainer and a yoga instructor. And I've been doing this work for 16 years. So I'm so, so grateful that you're here and you are totally in the right spot if you love what you do, but you maybe just feel like you just don't ever have enough time or energy to get it all done. If you are ambitious and purpose-driven, but you spend so much time in front of the computer that you've got the nagging aches and pains and we'll talk about those in a bit. And also if you know that taking care of yourself is something that you really need to do, but it always seems to make it to the bottom of your to-do list. So I have great news for you because today we are gonna be talking about all of that and we're gonna talk about why taking care of you must be a high priority business strategy We'll talk about the real toll that sitting is having on your body and what you can do about it. And also be chatting about the incredible ROI or return on investment of a morning wellness routine. So if you have questions at any time, please drop them into the chat and Roger will be sharing those with me as we go along. So before we get going, I wanted to tell you a little bit more about me and why I'm here talking to you about this. So I will let you know, I've been an entrepreneur for 16 years and about five years ago, I reached a very difficult point in my life. I was burnt out, I was exhausted. I was saying yes to everything in my life and all the opportunities, you know, all the requirements, all the uh, you know, appointments. I just kept saying, yes, yes, I can do that. Sure, sure, okay. And I got to the point where I was exhausted. I was dealing with constant anxiety and I was feeling really burnt out and depressed. Basically had acquired all of the things that we don't wanna have. And you know, perhaps you've dealt with some or all of these at some point in your life. And so I was really at a difficult point in my life and it was rough. 
but I decided to recommit to myself. I decided to recommit to my business, to my training as a personal trainer and a yoga instructor. I had a lot of knowledge and luckily I was able to bring that back and put it all into play and create a morning routine that allowed me to make myself a priority because I believe that as entrepreneurs, we are essential in our business and we need to treat ourselves that way. Although sometimes we forget to do that, but that's why you're here today, right? That's why you're here to get these tools. So it's a real honor for me to share. And I was able to not only be able to bounce back from that point in my life, but also really get to a point of feeling energized and clear and focused. And it really helped me to solidify my mission, solidify my mission to be able to empower people such as your beautiful selves with the tools that you need to go from being exhausted and overwhelmed to feeling energized and empowered. So I know that very likely we all want to be in that place of feeling energized and feeling empowered. And that's really my mission. And I do this by helping you take care of you so that you can take care of your business and still have energy and time left over at the end of the day to enjoy your life. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So as we all know, owning a business, I found this great analogy. Owning a business is kind of like riding a lion. <laughs> so you see this guy sitting on top of the line and the, the quote that I found that came with it was, you know, people think, wow, this guy or gal is super brave. And that person is thinking, how the heck did I get on top of this lion and how do I keep from getting eaten? And so entrepreneurship is kind of its own beast, right? And, and it's definitely, we all can attest to this, that it is a bit of a wild ride, much like being on a line, you know, you're kind of not sure how you got there, but you're, you're on for the ride and you're going to stick on it somehow, right? And so the thing is, is that in order for you to be able to thrive in your business, taking care of you needs to be a high priority business strategy, because otherwise, how are you going to be able to manage the task of, you know, all the things of entrepreneurship and keep on it? Because Here's the thing, if you look at these things here, your clients, your team, your community, your presence, what is the common factor in all of those things? I know you can, it's a pretty straightforward question, but sometimes we can forget that you are the common factor in all of those things. You are such a key component to your business and your business is a reflection of you. And when you thrive, so does your business, right? In order for you to be able to stay on top of that lion and manage all of the different things that come from having a business, it's really important that you are taking care of your business's number one asset, which is you. Because we all know the difference between having a business that's just barely making it and a business that is surviving or thriving, right? We know the difference when it comes to our bottom line in business, but do we know the difference in ourselves? And that's where I got to at that point where I was in that really exhausted, stressed out, frustrated state, I was barely operating. And perhaps you've been in that state yourself and you maybe know the difference between that state and a state when you are feeling clear, you are feeling focused, you feel like you're on top of your game, you're literally thriving. So that's really important to remember because we can tend to, as entrepreneurs, push ourselves to that state of exhaustion and overwhelm. And we're just barely operating, barely getting by, barely sleeping, barely doing all the things versus to a point when we are thriving, when you're feeling clear, when you're well rested, when you're calm. So that's the difference. And it's really important to remember that because you and your business are directly connected. So when you are flourishing, you bring more passion, more determination, more enthusiasm, and more vision to your company. But if you are feeling burnt out, if you're not sleeping well, if you're stressed, if you have all of or any of those things, you have less to offer, and therefore you won't be able to lead as effectively. So that's important to remember, right? Because here's the thing. As entrepreneurs, we tend to be really focused on our bottom line and our profits. And we can tend to be thinking, okay, I have to do revenue generating activities. I have to do this, that, and the other thing. And we tend to focus on growing the business, running the business and all of those things. 
And oftentimes we tend to skip our own health, seeing it as a luxury or yeah, I'll get to it later sort of thing to do. And that's really common. And let us know, you know, if that's if that's something that is common to you or you've dealt with, or you know, you're that's maybe why you're here today is because you've realized that about yourself and you want to adjust that. And the interesting thing, when I was doing research for this talk, I found some really interesting research out of Australia that was talking about specifically the traits that are very common to entrepreneurs. And consistently, we are very energetic, creative, motivated, which is great. But interestingly enough, that can position us to experience very strong opposite emotions, which can lend to mood swings or depressive or anxiety or stressed out state. We can kind of go from like one side of the spectrum to another, which is all the more important for us to be able to manage ourselves and help ourselves to thrive. So moving forward, because here's the thing, stress, 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 right? It's a reality of life and it's something that we all deal with to varying degrees. But here's the thing, when it boils down to it, some stress is good, but stress in and of itself is a factor in potentially in every major chronic disease. And if we push ourselves to the point of being so stressed out that we are completely exhausted, dealing with adrenal fatigue, then it can definitely cost us in the long run. And we'll talk more about that in the ROI portion of this talk. But here's the thing, like when it's coming down to it, it actually costs businesses a significant amount of money, $300 billion annually. And so, you know, it, it may, may not be on as large a scale for you if you are a solo entrepreneur or you have a smaller business, but it can still result in you feeling exhausted, you getting sick, you getting injured, decreased productivity, being absent from work if you're not able to show up. Because the reality of it is, is that as you can see here, our ancestors are, we are hardwired to respond to stress the same way we did thousands of years ago. And if we don't have a way to manage our stress, i.e. run from the saber tooth tiger and dissolve the stress hormones, then they build up in our body. And so it's really important that we have these tools that I'm gonna be sharing with you today so that you can manage your stress and you can keep it as a, at a good level because some stress is good, but too much stress is no bueno. It's no bueno. <laughs> So I hope you are enjoying this all so far. I'll check in with you, Roger. How's everything going with the chat? Oh, I can't hear you. Does help if I unmute. <laughs> yeah. I am, uh, I am happy and sad uh, to report that there are no questions. Okay, good, 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 good. Well, that's good. It means we're all on the same page. You guys are all following along. And so thank you. I just wanted to check in with you, make sure we're all good. All good, okay. So we will move on here from our <laughs> saber tooth tiger. And we'll talk about the real toll that sitting is having on your body. So take a look at our friends here and you will see why experts are saying that we are dealing with what is being called a postural de-evolution. So if you take a look at this graphic, you can see why it's being called that. So if you look to the far left, you see back in the day when we were making our way away from walking on all fours to being able to move to the middle of the graph where we began to use all of our tools. And you see how the person in the middle of the graph is very upright and he's still using his tools. But as we began to introduce more and more tools, you can see how the posture of the human body has begun to gradually slope back down. And you can see our friend here on the far right, who is using the most common tool that we all use. And you can see potentially the impact that that would have. And you can see how this is really taking us back. It's reverting us back posturally to where we were way back in the day. So regardless on your views of evolution, you can still see, you know, where we are on this and what it could be potentially having, what effect it could potentially have on your body. So I'll show you this. And this is quite a reality check. Let me tell you, it's very, very common. And perhaps those of you that, you know, were once in an office or have coworkers, or you just even look at other people on their phones or on their computers, you can see the effect that this would have on your body if you spend minutes, let alone days, let alone hours, let alone weeks, months, years 
in the position here that we have our friend, Mr. Green in. Can you see how his head is so much further of his hips? Can you see how Mr. Blue over here is very nicely aligned, his ears over his shoulders, over his hips? This is ideal alignment. This is the easiest way for your body to carry itself. But my friends, this is how we spend most of our days. And you can see why looking at Mr. Green here, why we're seeing this postural decline. We're seeing ourselves slope further and further forward. You can see why maybe you have a headache or a pain in the neck or you have upper back problems or you have wrist issues or you have ankle swelling, you have maybe any or all of those things. It's very, very, very common, especially for those of us that spend a lot of time sitting down. So moving forward, we wanna make sure that we are spending more time like Mr. Blue than Mr. Green. I am sure you guys are all on board with that. Let me, you know, I hope, I hope. Now that you've seen this from an x-ray point of view, it's quite, a, it's quite an alarming thing to see. And once you know more about sitting and the effects that it has, I'm like, I feel like I should sit up again and be a good role model for you all. <laughs> In fact, why don't we all spend a second here and sit ourselves up a little bit? Because I know after we start to pay attention, we tend to kind of, you know, get a little slumpy or what have you. So sit yourself back up, roll your shoulders back and notice how you feel a little bit more alert when you do that, right? So that's important for you to remember. So let's talk about some of the shocking statistics on sitting. People spend on average about seven to eight hours a day sitting down. I know that you can probably relate to that because you probably spent a fair amount and maybe now you're starting to, you know, we've heard the impact of sitting. So perhaps you have a standing workstation as well. So it is good for you to alternate back and forth. So we spend typically anywhere from, you know, seven or eight hours more sitting down every day and most people are on a device for anywhere between 8 and 11 of their waking hours and the statistic is that most people are spending time on 2.3 devices so you've got your phone you've got your computer multiple you know screens that you're working with depending on your workstation it's very common for people to be basically interacting with technology for most of their waking hours. I know that when I got the update on my phone and, and you know, let me know if this is something you can relate to. When I got the update on my phone that gives you your weekly screen time, it is shocking. <laughs> it is shocking. It is shocking to me because it's anywhere from like eight to nine hours every day. And that's, you know, I was shocked. And so here's the thing, remembering our friends that are kind of in that postural decline, we're starting to get into that sort of rounded posture. That is why 70% of the world's population is currently or will be dealing with some sort of neck, shoulder or back pain. So that's pretty significant, right? That's pretty significant because that means that that's a, you know, 70%, that's well over half. That's a significant portion of the world's population that's dealing with chronic pain. And chronic pain is exhausting. So that's really, you know, I'm not sharing any of these statistics to scare you, but just to wake you up to the fact that sitting is definitely taking a toll on our body and is something that we need to be aware of. So when we sit, especially when we slouch, this is where we start to have the impacts on our body. So this is significant because your ability to breathe deeply drops by 30% when you're slouched over. And this can cause brain fog, low energy, neck and shoulder tension, stress, anxiety, and even depression. So here's where we talk about the impact of our posture and our emotional state on ourselves. And this is important to remember because sometimes this is not discussed. This is kind of, remember when I was sharing about the statistics on entrepreneurs who are very driven, ambitious, motivated people are also more likely to experience anxiety, to experience stress, to experience depression. And this is often not talked about and it's, it's okay, but it's something that I think is important because we need to do what we can to manage and improve our mental health because that's really important. So here's an interesting statistic is that women in particular, men also as well, the, the percentage was lower. Women who sit for more than six hours every day are 48% more, are more likely to experience depression. Why is that? Well briefly talking about the impact of your posture on your emotional health. I don't need to tell you, but your body and mind are connected. 
obviously, right? Your body and mind are connected, but they're connected in a very deep, powerful way. And this is not to go off to the spiritual side of things. This is actually called embodied physiology. So there's science behind it, that your posture impacts your mood and your mood impacts your posture. So you can all tell me really quickly the posture of somebody who is feeling excited, who just won a million dollars, you can tell, or somebody who just crossed the finish line. Their posture is very big, it's very expressive. You know the difference from when you see somebody who's having a rough day and they're tired, you can see that in their posture, everything sort of melts. So why am I sharing this with you? Well, because in order you, for you to be thriving, to perform at your highest level, you need to be feeling your best and emotionally, physically, and mentally feeling your best. So if you are spending a lot of time sitting down and slouching, you are impacting your body on the physiological level, so on the physical level, and that can have an effect on your mental state. So I wanted to give you an opportunity to experience this for yourself. I want you to be able to get a takeaway on how powerful this is. So let's take a little breathing break. So what I want you to do is sit up please. So remember how your mom or your auntie or your grandmother was always giving you those commands like stand a little taller, chest up, shoulders back. That's what I want you to start with. I want you to bring your feet flat to the floor, uncross your arms, let your hands rest on your lap with your palms facing up, roll your shoulders back, and then just close your eyes. Just humor me. Just humor me. Just play along. Close your eyes. And I want you to take a big deep breath. Breathe it out through your mouth as slowly as you can. Stay tall while you do it. Try again. Breathe in. And breathe out. Keep going. Good. I'm going to pull up the screen so I can see more of you. Make sure you're actually playing along and not working. <laughs> Try again. Breathe out. One more time. You're doing so good. Show me one more time. Okay, so if you were here when I showed you that slide of those two x-rays, or if you weren't, that's okay. I want you to show me your best slouch. Show me your like, oh, this to-do list is miles long, and I don't know if I'm gonna get to it. Show me your best slouch, okay? So just round yourself over, put your arms in front of you like you got your hands on the keyboard. Play along, it's worth your time, I promise. Put your hands in front of you, drop your chest, and now breathe again. Just make note of how it feels. Couple more. One more time. And I, because obviously I'm a personal trainer, yoga teacher, I do not wanna leave you in this weak posture. So sit yourself back up, please. Sit yourself back up and then breathe again. Breathe again normally. So I hope that you can tell me that there was a difference. I hope that you noticed that there was a difference. Nod your head or give me a thumbs up if there was a difference. Big so, difference, actually. Thank you. Yes. I'd love to hear about that. Yes. We please yeah. make comments. And Roger, is there any other questions? I'd love to hear from whoever's speaking about the big difference they felt. There's no questions, but there's lots of comments. Shallow breathing, fast and shallow breathing, huge difference. Awesome. Beautiful. I love that you all. You are speaking fact, basically. Amazing. I wish uh, one million people was attending this. Honestly, wish... yeah. Mm. I sit maybe ten ten hours a day minimum. You Thank are speaking you. fact. I really appreciate this uh, course. Thank you so much. Oh, you're so welcome. My pleasure. Well, hopefully a million people will watch it on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good. <laughs> well, beautiful. Thank you for sharing. I really appreciate that. So Thank you. yes, exactly. Like, I love that you could feel the difference. So what was happening there when you went into that slouched posture, you basically slumped over. And when you are slouched over like that, you're compressing your diaphragm. So if you put your hands on your belly, take a deep breath. You should be able to feel your abdomen, your belly moving in and out. So your diaphragm, if you look at the graphic here, right around the bottom of your lungs, right here, your diaphragm wraps your rib cage. And so when you are slouched over, 
your diaphragm is compressed and it can't move properly. Your diaphragm is very important for your overall breathing function, but it's also very important because that's where your vagus nerve, one of the main nerves in calming your body, taking you out of stress, goes right down the middle of the diaphragm. So when you are under a high amount of stress, you are shutting down the higher brain functions because your body is trying to run from this, you know, saber tooth tiger, if you will, or the massive to-do list or whatever it is. So it's really important that throughout the day, periodically throughout the day, you make an effort to sit up like we just did. Even better, you get more gold stars if you actually stand up and take a quick break. And I know you might be ready to tell me, oh, no, 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 there's certainly not enough time for that. We will talk more about the ROI in a moment. But let me tell you that when you're under stress, as I just mentioned, your brain is in survival mode. It shuts down the higher brain functions that are responsible for such things as decision-making, creativity, memory, mood. So these are all really important functions, right? I think we can all agree that that's really important. And so if you just take time throughout the day to reset your posture, to breathe, you're shifting yourself out of that survival state into a thriving state. And remember, we talked about the difference between just operating and actually thriving, because when you thrive, then your business is more likely to grow and blossom because you're able to show up from a very different energy. And so this is really important to remember also, because when we don't breathe properly, when we breathe in that short and shallow way that you were feeling before, when you were feeling it, when we're in that slouched posture, you're activating the backup muscles, which are in your neck and shoulders, which are already tired because they're carrying that big, beautiful head of yours, right? Because if you're in that rounded posture, your head gets significantly heavier. So your head is anywhere between eight and 12 pounds. And when it moves one inch, just one inch forward of your shoulders, the weight doubles. So let's just do some easy math. If your head is 10 pounds right here when it's on top of your shoulders, you move it forward one inch, now it's 20 pounds, two inches, it's 40 pounds. It keeps doubling. And if you remember that graphic of Mr. Green and Mr. Blue, you remember how far forward our head tends to get. Is it any wonder that you have neck and shoulder tension and pain? Not really, right? If you're not breathing well and your posture is weak, then it's really, you know, it's kind of like a recipe for a downward slide with that. So it's really important if you take nothing else beyond taking breaks throughout the day, Quick ones. Your brain loves taking breaks, actually, so it increases productivity. Taking quick breaks throughout the day to sit up and breathe properly, it goes a long way, I promise. So I'm glad that you were able to kind of feel into that. So let's go back to the impacts of sitting, 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 sitting. So you've likely heard, you know, it's been said for quite a bit now that sitting is being called the new smoking, right? And why is that? Well, it's because it has a host of risk factors that can potentially contribute to disease, just like smoking. And that's pretty significant if your job requires you to sit a lot. So, you know, again, just giving you this information, it's, it's fine to sit, but you got to break it up. Because what happens when you sit for more than an hour at a time is that everything literally starts to slow down. Your circulation slows down, your metabolism slows down, your digestion slows down, your elimination slows down. This is why people who sit so much tend to have GI stuff, so they have stuff going on in their guts, or maybe you have swelling in your legs or swelling in your feet, or maybe your blood pressure is starting to go up. And so here's the thing. What happens when everything slows down is that your heart has to work harder, your blood pressure goes up. We tend to have more blood sugar, higher blood sugar levels, higher fatty acid levels or cholesterol. They all go up. And this sets the stage for what is now being called sitting disease. This is a very real collection of risk factors such as high blood pressure, high blood sugar, high cholesterol, and weight gain around the midsection. that are all significant on their own, but when they are combined, which they tend to be, they are called sitting disease, or you know, if you wanna get technical, it's called metabolic disease. But the reality of it is it can come from sitting and not moving very much. So it's really important that you have these tools that you're learning today to be able to negate the impact of that because you are very important in your business and I want you to be feeling good and I want you to be able to do your business for as long as possible. So I wanted to introduce you to somebody. While we're talking about the impacts of sitting too much, there's been an interesting study that came out a few years ago that looked at the colleague of the future who doesn't move very much. And you can see, 
this is not an ideal scenario. If you take a look at the color of her skin, if she's inside too much, you can see this powerful curvature in her upper back from being slouched and rounded over the keyboard. I don't wanna give you a close up, but there was all sorts of issues that can tend to happen with her eyes and with her blood vessels and weight gain and swelling of the ankles. So this is, again, just important for you to know because if we sit and we sit and we sit and we sit, it can lead to the demise of our physical body, which then of course will impact how we show up. And of course you have to continue to take care of yourself because it's so impactful for your overall productivity and your happiness ultimately, and your ability to enjoy your life and perform at a high level. Megan, are you open to a question? Yes, I would love a question. Jonathan asks, would you suggest doing small exercise or stretching during each break? Does a morning work out routine help you work for longer periods of time without breaks or are breaks always necessary? Great question. Okay, so I feel like there's a couple questions in there, which is awesome. So Jonathan, thank you for that. And um, you know, if, if I leave anything out, please feel free to ask more questions or to unmute. So to answer your question, a morning routine is an excellent place to start. We're gonna be talking more about that in a minute because it energizes your body helps you to move into strong posture, gets your blood flowing, and it helps to turn on your mental firepower and your physical firepower. Because it's really important that we're doing those things from a you know foundational vital health perspective. That's a great place to start. Here's the thing though, is that if people are just exercising in the morning and then, so say you exercise for a half an hour in the morning. So you exercise for half an hour and then you go and sit for eight to 11 hours. That half an hour, that's quite a big ratio, right? That half an hour doesn't negate the effects of sitting for eight to 11 hours a day. So it's called active sedentary. So you're active because you're working out in the morning, but if you're spending most of the day sitting down, then that's what we can still have that cumulative effect. So to your point, it's great that you do both. And so having a morning routine, getting everything fired up, getting your energy up for the day, and then interspersing breaks throughout the day where you get up and move your body, even just two to three minutes is super effective. So yes, I would definitely suggest that during those breaks, you get up, you move your body, you, you know, do some yoga at my desk, you take a little like stretch break. If it's your thing, you could turn on some music, have a little dance, just do something that takes you away from the screen, even just for a minute. And best case scenario, because there's a whole other host of issues that tend to be happening with our eyes that also Emma was dealing with here is called computer vision syndrome. So that's when we're spending time looking at something at very close range for most of the day. So during your breaks, if you take a look outside or better yet go outside, it's really helpful for your eyes. So for those of you that are noticing eye strain or you're starting to get headaches all the time, that's a really good thing to bring into those breaks as well. David would like to know if it's okay to suck in the stomach a bit while sitting. Yes, David, that's a great idea. As long as you are not feeling any pain in your body while you do that, it actually is a really great way to activate your core muscles. So you could, if you want an extra gold star with that, if you have a, you know, one of those sort of wobbly chairs, or if you have an exercise ball that you're sitting on, it will help to automatically engage your core muscles. But yes, by pulling in your abdominals, so squeezing your abs like you asked, and then rolling your shoulders back and sitting really tall, then you're helping to reset your posture so that you're back in that strong alignment. Anki would like to know if there's one yoga pose that she can do. I'm not, I'm assuming Anki is a lady that I can do every morning. Definitely. So let me think, there's just so many great options, but if you only had one that you were gonna do, anything that takes you from that rounded posture into a strong and powerful posture. So anything that you did, so you could stand up really tall and just lift your arms up. So you're stretching your arms. Yes, great, Roger. So let's all try it. Um, if it feels okay in your shoulders, if it doesn't feel good in your shoulders to reach up, then you can reach them out to the side. So what we're doing here is reaching out really nice and wide. We're stretching out our fingers. We're reaching up so that you're lengthening your spine while you do it. Make sure you're breathing and you're reaching through your fingertips. So if you did this standing up, you would get extra bonus points for that. Does that answer your question? Let's assume so. Okay, perfect. 
And that's a great question. And I just wanted to mention one thing about that posture is that they have actually have done a fair amount of research on those, what they would call a power posture. So you can see the difference between somebody who's sort of slouched over and we were talking about you know, body language and posture earlier. So there's a really interesting TED talk. It was by Amy Cuddy. She's a researcher, I think in Stanford. And so she was looking at the impact of power postures like the one we were just doing there versus ones where we're kind of slouched over. And so when we go into a power posture, which we tend to do when we're feeling that like confident, energized, focused energy, it actually increases testosterone, which is our ability, our hormone that helps us to charge forward, go after it, make decisions and decreases cortisol. <coughs> it increases your ability to you know, do things, take action and lowers your stress level. So again, from a biological point of view, that's really beneficial. Not only will it take you out of pain and help you feel more energized, but it actually, you know, is a little bit of a brain hack, <laughs> which is important too. Okay, so any other questions, Roger, or shall I continue? James, oh, no further questions. No further questions, Your Honor? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so what to do, what to do. We all spend a lot of time sitting down, so what can we do about it? So best case scenario is that you don't sit for more than 45 minutes at a time. And I know we're getting close to that, so I would like for us to stand up soon um, if we can. And so alternating between sitting, standing, or just moving your body more right? The human body is not designed to sit down for long periods of time. Remember back in the day, we go on airplanes and you were on a really long flight. And by the time you got off the plane, you were just like, oh, goodness, I'm so tired. What have I been doing this whole time? Nothing, just sitting down. Your body is not designed to sit. So best case scenario is moving between sitting and standing more frequently. If you have a sta the ability to have a standing workstation, you might be able to just kind of, you know, manufacture one on your own if you don't have a standing desk. I know they have some really affordable standing desks now that you can grab or just get up more often. And I will be honest with you, I teach this and preach this and I still have to use a timer. So I use a timer and this is, the technique is actually called Pomodoro. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but it's a productivity booster. So it's working for 25 minutes or 45 minutes and then taking a quick break. And that will be a great time I believe it was Jonathan. So that would be a great time to get up and do your stretches, reminding you to get up, taking those breaks, as I mentioned, to move and breathe and stretch, look away from the screen. That's really, really important. So it's important also that you're doing exercises like the ones we were showing here, like the power posture or reaching your arms out or even taking your hands behind your back and holding onto the seat of your chair or interlacing your fingers behind your back and squeezing your shoulders back. You know your body best, so do whatever feels good for you, but it's really important that you're doing those things periodically throughout the day. And you can do it, you know, side note, you can do these things while you're still working. <laughs> I'm all about multitasking. While you're proofing an email or proofing a post or what have you, just do something that your body is happy that you're doing. So, you know, get a little movement in there, breathe some deep breaths. And so the another thing that you can do, also was a great question, I believe Jonathan asked, but, um, or I apologize if it wasn't Jonathan, whoever asked that question about having the morning routine. So having a morning routine is a really great place to start. And I believe is a very powerful tool for entrepreneurs because we can all have, you know, the best intentions of working out and doing your yoga or what have you doing it later, but later comes and you maybe don't want to do it. And so it's easiest I find and most successful to get it done first thing. And so there's a gamut of research around this. There's you know, we can go into some big names, but we don't need to name drop, but there's a lot of people that really, really attribute their morning routine to their high levels of success because of the productivity that it brings to them and also the mindset and the perspective and all of it. So we'll talk a little bit more now. Uh, a uh, couple of questions from Christina. Sure. How long should the break be? Great question, Christine. So if, you, so if you're using the Pomodoro technique, if you do 25 minutes on, take a five minute break. And then if you do a longer interval, so if you do the 45 minutes, then you can take a 15 to, or sorry, a 10 to 15 minute break. So it's really up to you. Um, ideally get up, have a little bit of movement, you know, even if it's just, hopefully you're drinking enough water so you're well hydrated, just go to the bathroom and then come back, you know, on your way, maybe you do a little stretching or what have you. So 
even just two to three minutes, Christine, would be really effective. Would you also recommend mental breaks from work? If so, how long and what should we do? Great question. Yes, 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 yes. And I think we can probably all agree on this, that sometimes if we have a lot going on, um, if we're in the middle of a launch or, you know, if we just have some big commitments going on, it can be really difficult to take mental breaks from work, but it's all the more important to do so. So there's a beautiful quote from the Dalai Lama who says, you know, you should meditate for an hour every day. And if you don't have time to meditate, you should meditate for two. <laughs> and I, I, first time I heard that, I was like, oh my goodness, well, I guess I should start meditating, but it's really hard for me to do. So yes, I would definitely recommend taking a mental break. And so that doesn't have to be meditation if it's not your thing. There are lots of different ways that you can take a mental break. And even just as simple as you know, putting on your favorite music, or if you want to, um, you know, go outside or do some gardening or whatever you like. I just always suggest to people, do what feels good to you and literally try as much as you can to turn off your work brain. And I know that's really challenging, but it's all the more important for us to do that. So there's lots of different, like, even if you just did this is one that I do that I find is easier for me to use to focus. So let's try it together. So you can just take your fingers. So you don't have to have them up so where I can see them, but you're just gonna take your fingers and we're gonna use them to help us count our breath. So we're gonna inhale for four counts and I'll just show you, it'll just be one, two, three, four. And then you're gonna exhale for four counts. One, two, three, four. Okay, so let's try that together. Close your eyes, breathe out. And ready, inhale, one, two, three, four. Count on your fingers, exhale, four, three, two, one. Try again, breathe in, one, two, three, four. Breathe out, four, three, two, one. Try one more time, breathe in, breathe out. So again, that's a really simple technique. Breathing is the most powerful way for you to lower your stress levels because of what we talked about with the diaphragm. And one thing to keep in mind is that when you do these exercises, because it is the nature of your mind to think, it will immediately be like, and trying to tell you all of these things instantly. So just be aware of that, right? A lot of times people get dissuaded from doing meditation because they're like, I just can't turn my brain off. You just have to be aware of it. And you're using these tools to get a little space, to get a little bit of quiet because that mental break is really beneficial for your brain because your brain doesn't concentrate very well over about 45 minutes. That's when we start to get distracted, when we start to get brain fog. So even just a little bit of a breathing break or yoga break or whatever break you wanna take is really beneficial for your mental brain space. Jonathan usually does push-ups to break out of the tired feet feeling. Would you say stretching is better? I don't, I wouldn't say better. I love that you're doing that. That's great. And I would say push-ups are really good as long as you're doing them in good form <laughs> and you're holding that strong alignment. Remember Mr. Blue and Mr. Green, the two x-ray guys. So we're holding that strong alignment and doing the push-ups in that strong alignment. That's important because we don't want to be perpetrating the, the slouched or weaker posture, but I would suggest that it's always important to have a balance. So we do want to have strengthening activities like push-ups or planks, squats, lunges, all things that you can do pretty easily in a minimal amount of space. But we don't want to be over tensing our body because that contributes to more stress and inflammation. And so balancing that with some stretches is a good way to maintain that sort of delicate balance between being flexible and being able to move in all your different directions and also being strong and stable in your joints. No further questions? Okay, very good. Great questions, everybody. Thank you. Yeah, please share. I'd love to help in any way I can. Okay, so morning routines. We're all about ROI, right, as a business owner. So I had to, you know, speak to you in your language, <laughs> in our language, I guess. <laughs> and, okay, before I get into the ROI, I have a question for you. So what is it costing you to not have all the energy you need? What is it costing you to be foggy in your head and dragging all day? Because you are your business's number one asset, but do you treat yourself that way? So hopefully after today you will be, but maybe not all the time. So it's just important to think about that because remember, 
taking care of you needs to be a high priority business strategy. Sitting is taking the toll on us. So what can we do? And that's where a morning routine comes in. All right. So let's talk more about numbers. So as you can tell, I definitely like to bring in the research to back things up. I am very much a proponent of, you know, meditation and spiritual as well as the physical bonus. Um, physical benefits, excuse me. So exercise first thing in the morning is shown to boost your productivity by potentially up to 72%. That's a significant increase, right? And so that's a very significant increase. And why is that? Well, for many of the reasons that I shared already. So first and foremost, it does increase your firepower. So not just from a physical perspective, but yes, definitely from a physical perspective, it energizes your body by increasing blood flow, which is great for your cardiac, or your heart health, it helps respiratory health, it helps to increase your circulation, your digestion, your metabolism, which you may remember tends to slow down when we sit too much, but it increases your metabolism significantly. So this is important because not only are we revving things up in that time period, but your metabolism is higher for the rest of the day, which is important if we spend the rest of the day sitting down. So that's important to remember from a physical perspective, from a mental perspective, it increases your firepower as well by helping you to lower your stress levels, right? We talked about that when we shut down the survival brain, we turn on the thriving brain, and then it helps to boost your creativity and your concentration, your decision-making, all really good things. Also your ability to focus and to be calm and present in situations as it lowers your stress levels, right? So going back to what I mentioned earlier, anything that we can do to lower our stress levels is very beneficial. Anything that we can do to help our body stay energized is very beneficial. And exercising in the morning is one of those sayings that is worth your time and has a good ROI. Why wheel, as I just mentioned, oh, I guess I covered most of those, but just to recap, <laughs> better energy levels, oxygenating your muscles and your brain. Remember that. So when we were slouched over and we were trying to breathe, your ability to breathe or what's called your vital lung capacity goes down by 30%, which means that your brain is getting less oxygen. So when we exercise, it oxygenates your brain. And an oxygenated brain is a happy brain. So of course we want to oxygenate the brain. So as I mentioned here, so you can, you know, stress, creative, inspiration, all of that is improved. Also, going back to you being essential in your business, when you keep your body healthy and strong, you're less likely to get sick and you're less likely to get injured, all of which definitely will impact your bottom line. Okay. So here's another cool thing beautiful impacts of the exercising in the morning on your brain. Your brain is a very intricate stu structure. It's like basically the coolest supercomputer on the planet. So when you exercise, you get endorphins, which are the feel goods and getting us revved up for the day, norepinephrine. Serotonin is a mood balancing hormone and dopamine, which you may or may not know, is involved in the motivation center of your brain. So when you exercise in the morning, not only are you doing good things for your body and your brain, but you're getting a massive hit of dopamine, which triggers you into a higher motivational state. Plus, if you have it on your to-do list and you check it off, you get even more dopamine. And the more dopamine we have, the more we are likely to continue forward, driving forward on our mission. And any sort of regulation of your neurochemicals, which is what these are here, is very beneficial for your overall vitality, for your sleep, for your stress, for your mood, all of those things benefit when your brain is boosted like this. So this is good to remember for sure. Okay, so regarding your morning routine, here are some tips that you can use. So, well, we, we all can agree, you know, what we schedule is more likely to get done. When we schedule it, we're more likely to do it. So we do it first thing and then it's done, right? As we talked about, sometimes, you know, we can have this good intention of doing it at the end of the day, but by the end of the day, you're like, I just want to exercise by opening the wine bottle. No, is that just me? Okay. <laughs> so that could be a thing. Um, and then, you know, once you get it done, as I mentioned there, when we check it off the list, then we have that dopamine. And so if you only have five minutes, what can you do if you only have five minutes? So Jonathan had some great suggestions, push-ups, squats, lunges, planks, anything that moves your body out of that slouch posture into strong posture is gold, gold. So even just as simple as the one that we were talking about earlier, taking our arms up or take your hands behind your head and moving yourself into a strong posture, getting your blood flow, 
doing full body movements, okay? So, you know, unless you have something specifically happening, say in your bicep or in your upper back and you need to target individual muscles, I would say just go for it and do full body exercises like the ones I just mentioned so that you're invigorating more muscles and energizing your body as a whole system rather than just, you know, standing there and doing bicep curls and calf raises, which are good, but not as much bang for your buck as you might like. <laughs> Jonathan asks, the 72% increase in productivity, is that versus no routine or versus working out in the evening? Um, versus no routine in the morning. There is still benefit in the evening for sure, but it was significantly less because of the, you know, the time of that during the day. So you might be more energized and productive in the evening, which is good if, if you work in the evening, because some people that aren't morning people, um, there's still a benefit for sure. It still definitely will improve your productivity, mostly because of the effects that it has on your energy level and also therefore on your sleep level. So if you do well exercising at nighttime, go for it. Anytime you can do it in the day is great. No further questions? Okay, thank you. Okay, so I would love to invite you all. I do have a free workshop that's coming up on March 18th and that's gonna be happening at um, it's going to be happening on March 18th is a free workshop. And what I'm going to be sharing with you there are five tools to help you rise and thrive so that you can create a morning routine that works for your schedule so that you are taking care of yourself so that you can take care of your business. And you can still have time for lots of fun to enjoy your life. So we will make sure to drop that. So this is the link to sign up for that free workshop. I'd love to have you join. If you have any questions, um, we can definitely go over those now. And I'd love to have you there at the workshop. And I think that's the last one. Yes, thank you so much, everybody. So I'm gonna pop off my screen share. Thank you so much, Megan. That's oh, really so helpful. Mm. Can you share the same link also over the chat? Yes, I will. Thank you. It's already been shared. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, are there any final questions for uh, Megan? Hearing on Megan, you must have wowed us uh, into silence. <laughs> <laughs> on, on behalf of Vancouver Business Network and our brothers and sisters in the EIN family network, I thank you. So 75,000 people are thanking you for uh, sharing what you shared with us. Uh, it's, um, it's sometimes so easy just to spend the day going from dawn till dusk and not really paying much attention to health because health is important, but until it becomes chronic or acute, it's not urgent. And I think you've just given us a sense of the urgency that it deserves because it is indeed our number one asset, which we only appreciate when we lose it. So mm -hmm. very well done, Megan. Thank you on behalf of all, our, of, of, all of us. Oh, you, you now have the final word. Oh, thank you so much. I, I really appreciate your kind words, Roger, and also this opportunity. And you're right. It is one of those things that we can tend to take for granted, unfortunately, until we get to that point where we're injured or we're exhausted or we're burnt out. And I will tell you from having been down that road, it is so much easier for you to do little bits every day to take care of yourself so that you are feeling good, so that you are nurturing that beautiful relationship with yourself and centering yourself and doing all of these things. And it is really worth your time to make that time and space for yourself. So it's my honor, my absolute deep honor to be here with you all today. And I'm so grateful. And thank you again. Thank you so much. Thank you uh, very, very much, Megan.